Hello students, um, I'm Jamal Jamali from Mechanical Engineering Department and this is the first lecture of Structure and Properties of Material course code is MSE230. I will start with a general overview of um, our course. Uh, the course is held um, every two days, uh, two days per week at 80 minutes each. Uh, my office hours is posted uh, on my office door in mechanical engineering department I can be reached at this email as you can see here and this is the schedule for two sections F1 and M1 how you, your final grade is evaluated is detailed here quiz 1 gonna be multiple choice exam uh, there are two in class assignments two exams and a final exam project and academic activity is uh, uh, totally 30 percent of your final grade the details of how to do your project and academic activity uh, is posted to your Moodle in project and academic activity uh, folder the textbook which is uh, required for the course is uh, material science and engineering written by Callister the ninth edition which is available in your bookstore and this is the link uh, showing the <coughs> the book the right uh, version of the book that we are going to use it on the lecture and in the class we try to understand big portion of concepts and terms of this course but you need to follow the textbook and assessments uh, will be based on what's coming in the book and the slides are basically ones uh, prepared by Wiley publication about uh, this book and what I have gathered here are what we are trying to address in this lecture first uh, what is material science and engineering everything around us is uh, made of um, material or different materials um, our body what we eat what we wear buildings even our pen uh, all these materials have their specific properties mainly due to their structures. In material science, we investigate the relationship uh, between structure and properties of materials. <coughs> we design and develop new materials. Uh, and in materials engineering, we create products from existing materials. We also develop procedures of how to create materials and now we go to the second question why are materials important um, I leave it to you based on this slide I will ask you in the class about uh, your answer to this question you can also search uh, in the internet of course as I said in uh, two slides back in materials engineering we create products from existing materials so it's a uh, crucial and important to us as engineers to know better about materials this is uh, not specific to mechanical engineering this is applicable to chemical engineering aerospace engineering even electrical engineering um, where <coughs> engineers design and work with electronic and um, electrical devices we should be able to select the right material based on its application and properties uh, based on cut uh, cost of processing etc do all these we need to have a good uh, knowledge of materials properties and we need to know how this property is related to uh, the materials structure we need to know uh, that structure is affected by how a material is formed in other words the structure itself is affected by the process that material is made an example of this relation between processing structure and properties is shown here the graph uh, shows how a specific uh, type of steel property is affected by its structure here the steel is cooled down at different rates as you can see in the horizontal uh, line or horizontal axis uh, from left to right resulting in different structures as you can see 
and the different structure result in different uh, values of hardness of the material. We will discuss about uh, each of these terms in detail later. The relation between the structure, process, and properties results in different types of material showing different behaviors, different properties. For example, we know metals are generally strong and ductile, uh, polymers are soft and less strong, and ceramics are compounds, ceramics that are compounds of uh, metallic and non metallic elements are generally hard and brittle and fragile. An important outcome of knowing more about material is to find the right material for an application. Uh, this is uh, one of the main solutions provided by material science. This is what we know as material selection. Engineers often solve materials, <coughs> uh, material selection problems. How to do it? First, we need to pick an application and determine required properties. Uh, two, based on the list of properties, we identified uh, the candidate materials. And uh, step three, for the material, we need to identify how to make it. We have to clearly find how to make it, which is the process. As an example, uh, we need to determine if it's casted or if it's mechanical formed or welded so on and so forth. Um, when we say materials properties, we generally mean uh, one of these uh, six categories. An example of uh, mechanical engine, uh, mechanical property is discussed uh, was discussed in previous slides. Uh, Here is one more showing how the hardness of the material is changing by the uh, content of carbon. An example of electrical properties is um, electrical resistivity. Uh, shown here for copper. As you can see, increasing temperature increases um, the resistivity uh, or if we increase the impurity of uh, in, inside copper, which is another element inside the main one, it increases uh, the sensitivity. Uh, the other one is coming from the defer deformation, the effect of deformation. Or thermal conductivity uh, of copper. It decreases when you add zinc. What's thermal conductivity? We can discuss it and we can talk about uh, the usage of a material that has very low thermal conductivity is, as an example, in space shuttle tiles, uh, where silica fiber insulation provide very low heat uh, conduction. Magnetic properties is among uh, other properties. You see how adding 3% of silicon uh, to iron or F, it makes it uh, a better magnet. The idea is used in recording tapes as you see in the left side. When the head is moving over the recording medium, it magnetizes uh, the medium and information is saved there. Uh, what type of material are used uh, for this purpose? Um, you can type keywords like recording media material in tapes and find uh, at least two different types of material and you can work in this uh, in the class. When we talk about optical properties we mean the light transmission property of um, a material. This in some materials depend on their structural um, characteristics. Here you see how the crystal structure results in different optical properties of the same type of material. Deterioration is um, a gradual decline in quality service or rigor. Uh, deteriorative properties measure the response to environmental factors including moisture, oxygen um, or UV radiation. Here in the picture you see how uh, steel bar is cracked under stress and corrosion. Now we see how knowledge of material help uh, material selection in replacing hip. First we need to know a bit about the anatomy of the part. Here you see anatomy of human hip uh, 
a hip joint and adjacent skeletal features. Uh, the upper part of the leg is called femur, is connected to pelvis uh, through this head and uh, this joint is called acetabulum. If the head of femur is cracked as shown in this um, x-ray image, this results in pain and disability. Um, there is joint uh, deterioration, a loss of cartilage as one ages and also there might be joint fracture. So how to solve the problem? To solve the problem, a uh, hip joint, uh, actually hip joint can be replaced with artificial ones. As we discussed before, the first step of material selection is to list materials requirement. Of course, the material should be biocompatible, which means it should have uh, minimum rejection by surrounding uh, body tissues. It should be chemically inert to body fluids. It should be strong enough to support forces, and it should have good uh, lubricity and high wear resistance uh, between surfaces. Let's uh, look at the artificial hip replacement designed by biomechanical engineers. Femoral step, um, stem inserted into top of hip bone or femur that was uh, shown schematically previously. The head ball is affixed to femoral st uh, stem. The shell is attached to pelvis and between shell and head we have this liner. The material that can be used for each part uh, based on the list we provided are as um, you can see here. As an example, the liner can be made of polymer, here polyethylene, so that there is a few wearing between these two components or a small or reduction in the wearing between these two components. And in this slide you can see how artificial hip is fitted in its place schematically on the left side and this is uh, in the x-ray image. Okay, based on what we went through, uh, uh, we talked about different, uh, in general, uh, different type of materials, and processing decisions, material to what options material uh, properties depend. We talked about some terms like metals, ceramics, polymers, mechanical, electrical, thermal uh, <coughs> properties of material and how we can use material science in material selection. Uh, thank you and this was the end of this lecture.